This is, without any reasonable measure, purely awesome. It's a 30-story tall war machine fighting a demon the size of a skyscraper. It has a cape, and it's the physical embodiment of a heavy metal album cover. The game wants you to focus on this, the spectacle, the rhythmic combat, the feeling of being a colossus. But today, I don't want to focus on any of that. Instead, I'm interested in the boring stuff. How much does it weigh? What's its power consumption? And who changes the oil? Today, we're going to conduct a physical analysis of the Atlan Mech program. I'm going to go ahead and ignore its function as a gameplay mechanic and treat it as it's presented. A piece of military hardware deployed in real, albeit medieval war. I want to ask the mundane, practical questions to get lost in the explosions. I'm going to figure out if the single most spectacular thing in Doom is also the most impractical. The game describes the Atlan as a 30-story war machine taking the average height of a commercial story. This puts the Atlan somewhere between 300 and 390 feet tall. For our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and round this to an even 390 feet or around 107 meters. Estimating its mass is more difficult. Based on the volumetric model and assuming the construction of high strength steel alloy, or the Sentinel equivalent, we're looking at a machine that weighs a staggering 65,000 metric tons. To put that into perspective, that's roughly four and a half times heavier than the largest land vehicle we've ever created. Each footstep wouldn't just shake the ground, it would be a localized central earthquake, registering over three on the monumental magnitude scale. That's strong enough to shatter windows and knock people off their feet from a quarter of a mile away. It's heavy enough that it wouldn't just walk on the battlefield, it would sink right into it. The lore is vague on its construction, but we know the Sentinel technology is a fusion of engineering and of the divine. These armored plates would need to be forged, transported, and assembled. I see no evidence of factories or shipyards capable of producing components of this size. This suggests two possibilities. Either Argent Denur has a hidden, impossibly advanced manufacturing base we never see, or each Atlan mech is unique, an artisan crafted relic. Given the state of the world, the latter seems more likely. These are not mass produced units rolling off an assembly line. Each is a cathedral built for war. A machine of this scale requires a truly massive amount of energy. The lore states that the Atlans run off Argent energy or native Sentinel energy. In the game, we're tasked with finding and inserting power cells to reactivate dormant or damaged mechs. The energy density required for this to be feasible is absolutely staggering. A single power cell the size of a suitcase powering a 65,000 ton mech is the equivalent of running a battleship on a handful of AA batteries. This would truly be a monumental undertaking in power technology. Piloting an Atlan is not a matter of simply pulling levers. It requires a pilot whose mind can process the immense sensory data of a 30-story body while simultaneously controlling its limbs in a high-stress combat environment. The training and psychological conditioning required would be immense, or perhaps only one person is uniquely suited for it. A man who has been empowered by the Maker Divinity Machine. The Slayer doesn't just pilot the mech, he becomes the Atlan. This isn't a vehicle, it's a suit of armor. We see the aftermath of the Atlan program, but never its origin. This damaged unit from a later era serves as a case study in maintenance. How do you perform repairs on this scale? A single ruptured hydraulic line would be the size of a city sewer pipe. A damaged joint would require a crane larger than any we see in this world. The logistical tale of a single Atlan, its maintenance crew, its replacement parts, and its fuel would likely involve hundreds if not thousands of personnel. Their deployment also raises strategic questions. We pilot them in a handful of game missions. This is not a versatile combined arms asset. 
It's a highly specialized tool for a highly specific problem. When you have access to flying mecha dragons, why deploy slow ground-based walkers unless you have no other choice? When we assemble these mundane logistical details, the impossible scale, the astronomical energy requirements, the lack of supporting infrastructure, the highly specialized role, a new picture of Atlan emerges. It's not really a symbol of the Night Sentinel's power. They didn't build the Atlan because they were strong. They built it because the enemy was stronger. Hell deployed skyscraper-sized demons, so Argent Denur, in a desperate act of military escalation, was forced to build skyscraper-sized robots just to achieve parity, and the physics of that parity are absolutely terrifying. At this size and weight, a single right hook carries 1.8 terajoules of kinetic energy. That's the equivalent of detonating 430 tons of TNT. That's more destructive potential in one singular punch than the catastrophic failure of the Saturn V rocket. The Atlan program wasn't just escalation, it was a decision to weaponize pure cataclysm. The next time you climb into the cockpit of an Atlan and you take your first earth-shattering step, Remember the impossible physics, the non-existent factories, and the crippling energy costs, because it's only by understanding the sheer mundane impracticality of the machine that we can appreciate its true significance. It's not just a cool robot, this is by far the single greatest, most desperate gamble a civilization ever took. It's a final defiant roar against an overwhelming darkness, forged in steel and powered in hope, and it is almost certainly doomed to fail. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.